As noted in the Harvard Business Review, there's no team without trust, said Paul Santagata, head of industry at Google. He knows the results of the tech's massive two-year study on teams and team performance, which revealed that the highest performing teams have one thing in common, psychological safety. The belief that you won't be punished when you make a mistake. Studies show that psychological safety allows for moderate risk-taking, speaking your mind, creativity, and sticking your neck out without fear of having it cut off. Just the types of behavior that lead to market breakthroughs. And some of the most advanced forward-thinking businesses in the world have embraced psychological safety now for many years. Such companies as Google, who are innovative in terms of identifying this as one of the key contributors to high-performance teams. Ray Dalio, who is considered to be one of the greatest hedge fund managers in the world, his organization, Bridgewater, embraces psychological safety too. And in particular, it's baked into his principles, which he's written about in detail, showing how organizations can succeed within challenging environments. What I needed was independent thinkers who also had audacious goals, who would go after those together and would challenge my thinking and we would challenge each other's thinking and try to get to the best answer. And I realized it didn't have to come from me. And Dalio is somebody that I can relate to because I come from a financial services background. I've built and sold multiple companies. I've been CEO of organizations and I cut my teeth in business in the 90s where psychological safety was unheard of, where it was a kill every killed environment. But then I was faced with my own vulnerabilities. I was faced with the death of my son 10 years ago and this changed me dramatically as a leader. I always felt that whatever I needed, I could just strive for and push through and get it. I believed that people needed to embrace this sense of determination to be successful. But after my son died, I faced my own mental health challenges. I struggled with post-traumatic stress disorder. And ultimately that led to have a panic attack in a really important meeting. As a consequence, I started to realize that there was something bigger to life rather than just the next goal, the next deal, and more material gain. In the years that followed my study into psychology, neuroscience, Eastern philosophy, and Eastern psychology, led me ultimately to a master's in mindfulness-based interventions, but most importantly, it helped me connect back to myself. It helped me realize that the words that I speak have a direct impact on everybody around me, but also the words that I think have a direct impact on me. And a groundbreaking moment happened for me. I chose a few years ago to start talking about my own mental health, how PTSD and anxiety impacted me, how the death of my son and not facing into the grief had tragic consequences for my own mental health. I was really worried as I started to share these ideas. I was concerned about the judgment that I would receive from other people. But instead, something really magical happened. I started to get messages from people thanking me for sharing these emotions, thanking me for being vulnerable. And I started to see this vulnerability as a superpower because friends of mine, leaders, people that I didn't know were coming out and saying, I struggle too, I'm glad that you're speaking about this. It's important. So I started to realize that as leaders, when we open up to the fact that we can be vulnerable, when we open up to the fact that we actually can be infallible, I don't have all the answers to everything all the time, it's okay to put our hands up and say, I don't really know, but I'll try and find out and come back to you. Or, I hurt, I'm struggling. You know, maybe it's the isolation during the pandemic. Maybe it's the volatility that the pandemic brought. Maybe it's the separation from family. Most people in some way, shape or form have been impacted in the last two years. And organizations where leadership is embracing this and speaking to their own emotions are creating environments of inclusivity. They're creating environments where staff feel they want to be aligned to those leadership teams. They want to help their organization to push through and out of the difficulties that we faced during these last two years. And let's be fair. That's critical 
to retaining staff within our organization. We're seeing so many people leave organizations and shift to other organizations. And time and time again, when questioned, it's not always money. It's about principles, it's about values, it's about ideals. And most importantly, it's about being heard, getting a sense that you are being listened to. And psychological safety is about giving leadership the understanding that deep listening is an incredible tool. And the right action many times is inaction. It is just listening, thanking somebody for their contribution, and then opening up a collaborative space to see how can we affect the change that's needed in our organization. One of the most extensive studies into mental health in 2018 in Chicago University, which again was pre-pandemic, showed that for every dollar invested, we get a $4 return in terms of mental health for an organization. And on average, it costs an organization $20,000 a year for people who are stressed, anxious, or burnt out. Psychological safety is proven to have an impact and a capacity to change these situations within organizations. But psychological safety is not about forgiveness at all costs. It is about creating the environment to allow people to pursue excellence. And where people make mistakes, we still call them out. But most importantly, we make sure that there's a learning experience within what happens. And it's allowing organizations to understand the capacity to embrace failure. We often see failure and learning from failure as some entrepreneurial pursuit. But again, proven within teams, we can see that understanding failure and building and learning from that failure creates a rich environment for innovation, growth and future success. There are many organizations that actually celebrate failure. Pixar, which is one of the most successful film studios, has embraced psychological safety for many, many years, and they continue to embrace failure because they know that failure that happens in the sandbox environment creates momentum for something significant in the real world opportunities. Right now, more than ever, we have a need inside organizations to create a level of inclusivity, to create a space where people feel safe to be able to speak up about their thoughts, their feelings, and also their contributions in terms of innovation and what the company can build out of their phenomenal potential within the organization. During this hybrid workspace, we don't have the capacity for people to be able to just knock on another colleague's door. We don't have that collaboration that we would normally find when people are working cohesively within an office or a team environment. But we can create this by making sure that we embrace psychological safety. Because some of the greatest ideas may come from the quietest of voices within your teams. And unless you create a sense of trust and safety, those quiet voices will not be heard. And quite often, they were drowned out by noisier voices that may be even less effective in terms of what your organization needs. I'm really excited to be teaching psychological safety and I'm really excited to be able to bring this offering to companies and organizations. It is time right now for us to make sure that everybody feels they have a voice, for the collective to feel that there's an opportunity to contribute for leadership to embrace fearless leadership. And that's fearless leadership, and that's fearless in terms of, I'm not afraid to listen to what people have to say to me. I'm not afraid to step in and lean into the difficulties of what's needed. And I'm not afraid to be open with my people in terms of the fact that I'm not here as an infallible being. I'm not here as a pillar of strength. I have challenges in my life and I too am like you. So that we create this collective team because again, as I said, 
This is the key pillar, the number one in the broadest study of successful organizations that contributes to high performance teams. So I implore you to make sure that your organization is considering its roadmap in terms of psychological safety. And I'm excited to be guiding leaders across all sectors of business and community in the roadmap to being more psychologically safe, to building more innovative teams, to retaining more quality within their organization, and to directly impact the bottom line by making sure that everybody feels safer, happier, more well, and more able to contribute to your business, your ideals, and your goals. For more information on the courses offered around psychological safety, drop me an email at jc at justincaffrey.com.